Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the CCC Digital Brief with Mark O'Loughlin and the Cloud Credential Council. Now, in this series of the CCC Digital Brief, I am asking global digital experts to comment on the impact that COVID-19 is having on organizations and how digital technologies and services help. And on today's CCC Digital Brief, we're joined by Siddharth Parekh. Siddharth is a senior consultant in cloud and all things DevOps at the Nat West Group based in India. So Siddharth, thank you for joining us today. Hey, uh, thank you, Mark. Raise your mind. <laughs> now, Siddharth, can I ask, what industry uh, do you work in? I work for the banking and finance industry. In other words, a technology company having a banking license. Yeah, so the, the financial sector, I guess that's uh, all things relevant at the moment. Um, now, how has that industry, so the financial, the banking sector industry, how has that and their customers been impacted by COVID-19? What, 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 what challenges are, are happening there? The outbreak of uh, coronavirus uh, 2019, um, unassociated yeah. public health measures to contain the disease has severely uh, you know, disrupted the business activity across all areas of the UK in March. There were widespread mm -hmm. job losses as from scaled yes. back operations amid efforts to realign capacity with demand and reduce cost. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, in the month of March, uh, uh, many regions recorded a decrease in employment as from mm -hmm. scaled back staffing capacity in line with the lower uh, workplace activity and a drop in outstanding business. I see. So it's been significant. I guess there's a couple of impacts. There's the impact from our perspective on the cloud and digital that drives banking. There's been an impact on employment within the sector as well, both in IT, yeah. but in the general um, uh, sector as well. I guess an impact in customers. Has there been any changes in customer requirements that mean the bank have to do or think things differently, but very quickly? Uh, for example, like government payments have been set up to get into banks and people's accounts, but that, that's all been done very quickly, very fast. Uh, are there any things like that that's happening in the finance sector that either helps customers do something or just by the very nature of COVID-19, banks have had to do things very quickly that they wouldn't have done in the past? Yes, our bank was listed as one of the 12 primary dealer banks to partner with the UK government to uh, yeah. provide access to the coronavirus business interruption loan scheme, uh, which in turn supports small and medium sized businesses to access loans and overdrafts. So the challenge uh, for our bank was to shorten the product design and roll out timelines from months to weeks mm -hmm. in order to benefit the customers who required funds to keep their businesses afloat and maintain the level of liquidity. For example, what we did was shorten our typical six week release timeline into into just a two day release. And this was possible due to the huge investments that have been done over the last few years in the areas of cloud, AI, ML, agile, DevOps, automation, mm -hmm. and data analytics. The second yes. is due to the uh, pandemic time, there is an increase in customer queries and banking requests and over 2200 UK employees are supporting customers call from home every day. Uh, so these are the uh, two things, you know, we have been affected or we have changed yeah. in our delivery service. That's significant. But just to go back, so you've taken a six week release cycle, which isn't bad for a finance, for a banking sector, down to two days. Yes. I, think, days. That's, I think that's significant. I think it's commendable, but I think it's significant. I think it's in, in an indication that we we these sectors have been brought years into the future i think uh which is not a bad thing in some cases but tell me you were saying that that's happened because of the adoption in previous years of cloud ai big data uh analytics and all these other things uh, an approach to agile so you're saying that the investments that that west have put in in previous years have helped you reduce that uh, release cycle from six weeks down to two days to deal with the emergency situations that you face today. Is, is, is that the story we're hearing? Absolutely, yes. Uh, it has been I, widely been circulated across uh, many different banking uh, uh, you know, news as well. 
Yeah, so, so, so uh, always sell your own publicity externally as well. It's always good for business. That, that's really good. And can I ask, M. Siddhart, so, you know, um, you, you, you're expert in the space of all things digital, all things cloud, DevOps, and, and so forth. Um, but has this situation with COVID-19, has that changed your personal views on digital transformation um, from what you may have thought about last year or the year before? Yes, uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, till now what is happening was, uh, you know, people thought that uh, the digital uh, transformation and digital acquisitions both are same, for example. You yeah, know, acqu yeah. acquiring Zoom or Team is something digital acquisition is, but on the other hand, uh, is that digital transformation? No. So. Uh, your question sounds uh, familiar to uh, me in a different pers perspective also. Uh, you know, when people don't know the difference between doing agile and being agile. So, for yes. example, many <laughs> many people think that Scrum events are uh, what being agile is, similar to organizations or teams or individuals think that acquiring tools like Zoom or Team is what digital transformation is. Yes. Uh, and the problem is, the uh, consequences this has happened is, I was reading one of these surveys by Forbes. There is, they stated that... Uh, you know, the directors, CEOs, and senior executives have invested, uh, you know, somewhere around 1.3 trillion in digital transformation last year, and uh, out of which 900 billion dollars were went to waste. The reason, <laughs> digital transformation is not about technology; it's about people. In other words, yeah. there's a tendency to put technology at the heart of digital transformation, when yes. in reality, it's people that drive successful transformation. I think that's so important. I think you you make a fantastic point there that yes, we see it all the time. Um, while you do need digital technologies to do digital transformation, you've got to think about it's the people that make the change happen, not the technology. The technology is just a tool. So digital is a better tool than technology from 10 years ago, better, faster, maybe more agile. But again, agile versus agility, uh, people versus getting it done. And you mentioned there's been a topic of this whole uh, series about digital acquisition or you know uh, digital transformation. Just because I acquire the digi digital tools doesn't mean I actually transform the business in doing something. And uh, those figures you gave over a trillion spent and 900 billion wasted. I mean, I think it'd be better if we just got the money and put it in your bank and uh, <laughs> <laughs> left it there for a few months. I, I, I. I'd feel better with that, but um, can I can I ask then, in a more general sense, maybe in the banking or maybe from a consumer perspective, or from even from uh, NatWest enabling a lot of their staff, so many of their staff to work from home, which has been a massive thing for organisations. So, I, I guess how is cloud helping organisations deal with today's changes and getting ready for this new future above and beyond home or you know working from home? I, I would say if there is one sector that has emerged stronger from this pandemic even, it would yeah. be the cloud computing industry. For example, according to Microsoft, the team collaboration product saw a monthly spike of 775%. It's similarly, so much, yeah. similarly, Netflix saw the app download jump to at least 60%. Google Me, the video conferencing product, uh, has day over day growth surpass 60%. So the organizations, including telecom, manufacturing, financial services, insurance, retail, and healthcare, and many more are effectively utilizing the cloud-based services to create resilient and disaster-averse systems that cater to their customers anywhere across the globe. So it is safe to say that cloud has risen to be an essential backbone in this time of crisis. And lastly, I, I, uh, ahead, one yeah. more point, sorry, uh, yeah. that along with the availability and the scalability benefits, cloud platforms also have the benefit of global reach. Two months ago, it was a strategic question about cloud. Now it is an existential question. <laughs> I like that, yeah. It's, I think, yeah, that, that ship has sailed about should we do it. It's absolutely we must do it. Now, how do we do it and how do we do it the right way? 
and the technology gets us so far but the people help us deliver that that strategy so yeah i i, I do think and what we're seeing is a phrase we've used is i think organizations have been pulled five or ten years into the future and i guess it does help the generation of cloud for the providers they're getting business out of it which means they'll put more products and more features out hopefully and um, for the end users of all this cloud and digital technology i think they're not as afraid especially working from home that's a massive change for people to do but they've managed somehow to do it uh, might not be great might not be the perfect environment or, you know um, but still they've found that the tools generally work they can communicate it's not as good as face to face or sometimes it's probably better because you get your work done and have shorter uh, teleconference calls so i think people have have readjusted now can i ask um so you, in, in the finance industry over the next six to 12 to 18 months, COVID is going to be around for a period of time. A lot of people say until a vaccine is out, we'll still have some form of a lockdown or social distancing. So we're not going back to a new normal soon, let's say. What yeah. do you think that are, are some of the biggest challenges in your industry for the next six, 12 to 18 months? Um, the biggest challenges due to the, uh, or the changes due to the pandemic, uh, includes uh, one is increase in non-performing loans, a reduction in revenues, mm -hmm. and a greater demand on customer service teams. Also on the payment side, the total payment volumes have shrunk due to the reduction in consumption and trade, which in turn uh, will force the banking and finance industries to make operational model changes, likely prioritizing the greater flexibility and some new short-term yeah. goals. We are, uh, the banking industry, are also at the forefront of the debate on cash and how to transition to an economy where digital payments may dominate. But many people still want and need to use cash. All yes. have to uh, you know, adjust to, uh, to the external environment mm -hmm. and increase the support services internally. Like the business continuity plans are designed to ensure we continue to operate effectively, meet our regulatory obligations, when 90 percent plus employees are working from home at the moment yeah that's significant and i think that recognizes that even in your banking industry which is very conservative are saying we have to change our models we have to change quickly you yeah. know as you said we have to flip it from um you know the loan section to we're going to get a lot of customer queries and even default so we have to shore that up but equally then we have to change the conversation around about physical money. Do we then push the cryptocurrency agenda, which could be challenging to banks, but hey, they were going to have to address that anyway over the next over the coming years because of blockchain and cryptocurrencies. So again, I, I think that's a good indicator of digital, which su supports all these types of changes, only gets us so far, but we do have to change our business model and our thinking and be brave using all these tools to see how we go for the future. That's, uh, that's very interesting. I think interesting times for the, the banking sector. I can tell you, I haven't I used very little cash in the past, but in the last 12 weeks, I haven't used a single coin or note of cash or anything. It's all been electronics. So bring on the blockchain, bring on the crypto. I'm ready. I think it sounds like Nat West is almost there. Now, so there are, Thank you. There's been some good um, insights there into the financial sector. So thank you for bringing those up. But I have one final question. It's the most important question of the series of them all. So Siddharth, when all this is over, when we're done and we're through, what one thing do you look forward to most of all? Um, to be uh, very frank, I have wrote in one of my articles also. Uh, when this all ends, the emergence of new human being will happen. Mm. One who is compassionate for others first, thinking of building a better world, not for oneself, but for the generations to come. Rise above the discriminational scrutiny and yeah. continue his bet to build a more robust and equitable society. So that's that's fantastic. That's great, I guess, um, so, uh, future side as well. I hope we see it. I hope you see it soon, and I hope to share that moment when we do see it with you. So Siddharth Parekh, thank you so much for joining us today on the CCC Digital Brief. Thank you, Siddharth. Pleasure, mine. Thank you so much, Mark.